Yo, yo! Starting up today, I'm actually going to let the opening of this game run a couple times because the song is really cool and it only plays during the opening. So I'll be back. I'm just uh, grab something to drink. Yo, yo! Starting up today, I'm actually going to let the opening of this game run a couple times because... Hey, Okega, how's it going? We're going to let this opening play a couple times before we start since the song kicks ass and you only get to hear it in the opening cutscene. <laughs> nice. Cross is a pretty cool game. More of a spin off, spiritual successor to Chrono Trigger. I'd say than a direct sequel. There are some components that are pretty direct, particularly the end of the game. But for the most part. Oh, no worries. Not using a guide. Uh, there are a lot of secret characters in this game, many of which I'm probably going to miss just because I'm not using a guide. If you know Chrono Trigger, look at the back of your hand though, and you want to help me out, uh, let me know when I'm coming up on a character that I could miss. Let me know. That's cool. I have played this, but it was so long ago I don't remember anything about the game, so... Hey Patrick! How's it going, dude? The character that's in your party here, this is technically taking place like partway through the game. So you always have Kid with you, and then you have a random third party member, but it's someone who can actually join your party later on. The best part of this game is that the soundtrack is still Yasunori Mitsuda, the uh, Chrono Trigger composer. I would argue. Let's uh, mess around with the settings.
so Pat, I decided on uh, changing it up. Since both Chrono Cross and Crisis Core are pretty long, uh, I'm going to do Chrono Cross two days in the week and do Crisis Core another two days. What I might end up doing is just like having a different game every single day um, and just playing through a whole bunch of things all at the same time to maximize exposure and also play a whole bunch of cool games all at once. <laughs> Played it once, I remember nothing about the game. There's a couple of key moments. I remember this fight with Lynx. I remember the very final battle and a lot of the music. Cool. I remember this cool combat mechanic where you have stamina basically and you can choose a weak, medium, or a strong hit and it displays the accuracy percentage there for you to be able to hit, but I don't remember like that thing in the corner that says field effect, I honestly have no idea what that means, so I think it has something to do with like elements of magic, which in this game are represented by colors. I want to say kid is red, surge is white. The worst thing is that I don't have a guide pulled up, and I'm not going to like slow down the stream by going and checking a guide, so I'm almost certainly going to miss some of the optional characters. But if I recall correctly, you can't actually 100% this game in a first playthrough. There's a point like halfway through the game that's kind of a, uh, a branching point in the story where you either choose one direction or the other. Depending on which one you choose, you get different characters as a result, so you have to do at least one new game plus to really 100% the game. Which I'm not going to do, so... I seem to have this memory of uh, the kid version of me hearing the victory music and like freaking out because it's from Chrono Trigger. Nothing up to that point was explicitly Chrono Trigger related. I'll talk about this a little bit more later, but this game is actually based on a Chrono Trigger spin-off called Radical Dreamers that was never actually released for a really weird console that no one has ever heard of called the Satellaview. Uh, the Satellaview was a satellite add-on to the Super Nintendo, but Super Famicom only came out in Japan. Uh, namely, it allowed for this like crazy uh, multiplayer Zelda game. It was like a sequel to Link to the Past. I don't know if someone's localized it and made an English translation of it, but Radical Dreamers was like a, a novel, an interactive novel, more so than a game. It didn't really have any combat mechanics or anything like that. But if I recall my history, it had to do a lot to do with Magus and Shala. I was trying to tie up some loose ends with Magus and Shala from the end of uh, Chrono Trigger. This game has a really bitchin' soundtrack though, so whatever flaws it might have, it <laughs> recovers in the soundtrack arena. You notice characters don't gain experience after battle either. Instead you get like stat boosts, and I think whenever you beat a boss you get stars that increase your party's power. You get like one star for each boss you kill. Magma burst. Why not? And that's going to change the field effect in the top left corner if I remember correctly. See, the thing about healing the party, I don't remember, like, are elements like items? Are they consumable? 
Well, the game doesn't really establish that to you very well. And because this is like kind of in the middle of the game, I don't really need to look around and make sure I find all the chests. Hey, how's it going, noob? Noob, I don't remember. Have you played Chrono Cross before? Fire Emblem Awakening opens with something like this. It's like in the middle of the game. And you get back to that part way later. Cool, man. You're in for a treat. You played Chrono Trigger, though, right? We just started, so you haven't missed anything. Also, this isn't like the chronological beginning of the game. Gotcha. Hey, heretics, how's it going? Another neat fact, there's a shitload of characters in this game. And, you know, the, the dialogue doesn't really vary depending on which characters in your party for the most part. So how do they write separate dialogue for all the different characters who all have different accents? Well, they wrote an accent algorithm, so like, kid has an Australian accent algorithm, and if she's in your party, whatever dialogue she says, that algorithm is applied to it, which sometimes has silly effects. Um, most of the characters don't have funny accents, but the ones that do, it's always applied to whatever they're saying. You alright, mate? I think that dancer chick who's in my party is uh, an op. Well, there most of them are optional characters. She's a permanently missable character. I seem to remember going out of my way to get her. FMV, shutting up. That's right, this is a PlayStation 1 game, so we gotta get super excited whenever we get FMVs, full motion video sequences. That's when the graphics actually look pretty good for about 10 to 30 seconds. Although I'm fortunate to be playing this on an emulator today. As with all the other games we've been playing, I do own a physical copy of this, but easier to stream an emulator. And also the emulator does some graphics upscaling and smoothing that makes the PS1, which is probably the uh, poorest aged system, maybe next to the Nintendo 64, uh, look pretty good. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. It certainly looks better than like uh, Final Fantasy VIII or Final Fantasy VII. Pre-rendered backgrounds. Uh, you also can get 200G of uh, it's your allowance and your Chrono Trigger. Yeah, so I have played this before, but this is basically a blind playthrough because I don't remember anything. I have some like fever dream deja vu, light memories of certain parts of the game, but this is also very similar to Chrono Trigger. The first thing your mom tells you is to go meet a girl who's expecting you. Oh, oops. And she has a cat, multiple cats. Also a similar thread in, uh, I think Lena is the first character that we can permanently miss if we screw up her uh, recruitment section. Swordfish. Sawfish, sorry. Yeah, so, 
Apparently, this takes place in the same world as Chrono Trigger, but the continent is alien. Like, you never actually land in El Nido. I'll be a nice search. scales for, but I'm going to find out. Sure. Show me your elements. I'm not going to buy anything, but what do we got? Tablet. Ah, okay, so now we learn if it has a little X1 by it, that means it is consumable. And in this game, it treats, like, potions and antidotes as elements. But that makes me presume that these elements over here are not consumable. Can I help you, Ben? What's up, Soylent Smoothie? Did you say you're a Chrono Cross or Chrono Trigger fan? Both. We're not going to forge anything. We don't have any stuff to forge with. Nothing to disassemble. So when she says weapon and armor shop, she means I will let you craft stuff here. Uh, I will sell you stuff. Evil Dwarves. It kind of reminds me of Norse mythology where Dwarves and elves have a much more sinister connotation. You know, the Japanese are big fans of Norse mythology. You get lots of characters, events, items are named for Norse myth, like Drassil, Mjolnir, Gunjnir, the spear of Odin, is usually the ultimate spear in just about every uh, Japanese RPG. Hey, Mickey, she was the one who was in my party. Uh-huh. Sure. Jungle Piper and the Dragoons. Which refers to a generic group of, like, military people in this game, as opposed to, like, a class that could jump. game that this is based on, which I'll talk about again in maybe another hour or so. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying, there's this Satellaview game. Damn, man, don't be so deep in the kitchen. Yeah, Record of Fate. I remember this now. Now, this is basically a blind playthrough, so to that end, I'm not going to spoil anything that happens later in the game. Mostly because I don't remember most of it. Um. <laughs> don't be so deep in the kitchen. Got time for that. I, I got to find a Hecron bone here, yeah? Oh, yeah. That's going to help me uh, recruit an optional character. For some reason I remember that. It might have been like I missed it and had to restart my game or something like that. I have a rehab. Waitress chick talking about life and death and Necklace made from dragon scales. So I should get those for Lena, is what you're telling me. <laughs> Alright. Well, Komodo dudes. 
Isn't there a house where there's like this mojo dude in the basement? He's like a voodoo guy. Does that sound familiar? I don't remember how you activate him. I don't remember if he's a missable character either. Got it. Cool. Rock and roll to trap the sucker. It's the lay of the land to make a surprise attack. Is he like a tree dude? Maybe he's a tree dude. He's like a puppet. He's got he's like made out of straw or something. I think so. I'm pretty sure I used him in my party as a kid. I recognize him when I see him. I think you find him in this town though. He's like in somebody's basement. Go for the gold. Bring forth a better tomorrow. Yeah, that sounds right. I think you can get the the dog that you give that bone to. But I think that this mojo guy... Is he down here? No. We'll find him. Oh man, pre-rendered backgrounds. I like the 3D environments in like Final Fantasy X and beyond, but... The cool thing with pre-rendered backgrounds is that every map you go to is a painting. Six more narwhals. narwhals. Translation in this game is not perfect. Sneakers, welcome. Sneakers, I don't remember. Had you played Chrono Trigger or this Chrono Cross? No, that's going to be important later. Wondering about how things could have gone differently. Another you. Oh yeah. Thanks, dude. I'm hoping I get someone like Okega was for Mother 3 that really just... Okega and Noob that know this game really well and tell me if I'm about to miss a missable character. Because <laughs> it would be too much of a pain to be constantly alt-tab looking through walkthroughs. But if I miss some dudes, whatever. I'm, I'm not going to do a new game plus. At least not anytime soon. Right, let's try to find this Mojo guy. I think his name's Mojo. Gotcha. This is my house. Metroid of Unrisk. Yeah, so like, again, I mentioned earlier that there's a... Um, there's a ton of characters in this game, but the dialogue is always the same, depending on who's in your party. So there's an accent algorithm, and what it will do is it will look for S's if you have this pushel character in your party, and it will dynamically change them to THs, instead of having to write unique dialogue for every character in the game. Okay, so don't go talk to Lena yet. That's the, that's the quest. Attacked by a panther demon. The fact that Surge was attacked by a panther demon, I remember at least from the story, that that's super important. Una. I think in general, if a character has a portrait, they probably join your party. I don't have any idea how to get her in my party, though. Thanks, Una. Appreciate the vote of confidence. That dude teaches you combat, maybe? Uh... Alright, this record of fate thing is super important. I kind of like it. There aren't a lot of games that tie in the method they use to have you save the game into the actual plot. Uh, but, spoiler alert, the record of fate is important to the plot. I won't tell you how, be mostly because I don't remember. <laughs> I just remember that it is. And I think it has something to do with Chrono Trigger, too. It 
says, The ecstasy and anxiety of the Chosen One. A mega babe is in love with me. Great. Cool, yeah, I think he does the combat explanation tutorial, which would be helpful. I don't remember how to play this game. <laughs> Persuade Sir Toma, who I don't think is the same Toma from uh, Chrono Trigger, but maybe he is. You can't really tell from his sprite, but you should Google image search Toma. Uh, he totally looks like Hercule. Okay, so he's a descendant of Toma. That's another different thing with this game. Akira Toriyama is not the artist, so it has a very different visual style. kind of keeps up the aqua beam, all right. The cool thing we learned from uh, Chrono Trigger where you can talk to people and keep moving. Surging poo. So I give her the Hecarim Burrow, right? Okay, I can just use it maybe, perhaps? That's how you get here in your party, but I don't remember what I have to do to use it. Because I can't use it from here. Okay. Well, we'll come back to it. Oh, maybe we have to meet up with Lena. Maybe that's why she's telling you. Sure. Yeah, we'll come back after we talk to Lena. Maybe we'll recruit her. I kind of like that there's not experience in this game having so many characters. I find that if there's tons of characters and you get experience that I tend to use the character that joins me earliest in the game since I've spent so much time developing them. Ah, maybe this is what I need to do. Relevant. Aha! Aha! -ha. To accept or not to accept? Pretty Miracle Power X. Hell yeah! We'll just leave their names the same. If we ever come back and do a second playthrough, we'll give them silly names. Ooh, another game that has a shitload of characters, another series of games, is uh, Suikoden uh, for the PlayStation. Those are really good. There's 108 characters in every game. It's a reference to this uh, one of the four Chinese classic novels. Like how Dynasty Warriors is Romance of the Three Kingdoms, Suikoden is uh, literally translates to Water Margin. It's one of those four classic books. Sort of like the Chinese Odyssey and Iliad. They're really good, though. I'll have to add that to my list of games to play here. Don't hold back. Alright. So you're gonna tell me... Two different attack levels. Yep. Yep. Start with weak. Build up with strong and fierce.
Yeah, so see how the field has a little blue thing there? We're gonna do the same thing. Kill ourselves. Surge's weapons are called swallows. Okay. Ah, okay, so attacking is what lets us use elements. Okay, so they are permanent, but you can only use them once per battle. Can I help you, Ben? Yeah. Consumables, there we go. Basically, never use consumables. Got it. Oh, pressing your luck, buddy. was pretty long. They didn't equip that aqua thing I found. Yeah, see, so now I should be able to... Oh, wait. See, I've got a tablet, but that's all I can afford to do. But if I get two, now I can do a tablet or a cure, but I already used cure. Hey, D-Rock. How's it going? Yeah, I think it's like blue, red, white, black, yellow, green are the opposites. I already used Cure. I'm not going to waste my tablet. Whack. Doing all right. I'm gonna take a stab at that. What's up, Yisla Extraordinaire? How's it going? Thanks, man. All right, let's uh, let's equip that element on Surge. Let's not use. Let's allocate. Right, because he's got he's white primarily. It's level three. Oh, uh, okay, so you see like cure we could put it in the level one area and use it more readily, but if it's plus one it does more. Similarly Aqua Beam, since it's in the third slot, is plus two. Do you make a trade off on when whether you get to use it earlier or whether it is more effective? Select Extraordinary, are you a fan of uh, Chrono Cross? Mm. Oh, yeah, man, I don't remember where. You know, it could be that the character that I'm looking for, this Mojo guy, that he's in um, the other dimension. Those guys look like the news from. For no trigger. I don't think that's what they are, but they look like that. Yeah, they're called beach bombs, but they look like the news for sure. Nice. Yeah, me too. I was looking for, I used to have the um, strategy guide for this game, but I can't find it. Pretty sure my water ability is not going to be super useful on these dudes, since they appear to be 
and water elemental themselves. <laughs> D-Rock, do you know enough about this game to warn me if I'm about to permanently miss a character? Because I'm not going to like pull up a walkthrough while I play, but... And it's okay if I miss something, but having someone in chat who knows this game a little bit better than I do, it's been like... 15 years since I've played this? Basically, how old is Chrono Cross? That's how long it's been since I've played this. I think I, I bought it right when it came out and haven't touched it since. Right. See how they're getting stat boosts when you win a battle, but you don't actually gain experience in this game. Alright, let's give that to Potion. Although, again, it's not going to be super useful on these guys. One. Yeah, so there you go. 14 years. That sounds right, because uh, my my way I remember things is how far away is it from Final Fantasy VII? Final Fantasy VII was 1997. I have this weird memory of playing uh, Donkey Kong Country 2 and looking at the, uh, at the title screen where it says the copyright year, and it says copyright 1995, so that always sticks with me too. The Donkey Kong Country 2 came out in 95. August 2000 and NA Heretics? Okay. So yeah, about 15 years then. 14 and a half. One of the last uh, PlayStation 1 games. Though. Ish. No. I think 9 came out after Chrono Cross. I'm pretty stoked to play 9 again. I like replaying just about all the Final Fantasies, but I think 9 is the one I get the most excited to, to play again, because I never remember anything about it, other than the sweet battle system and rocket music. You know, I don't know if those are actually supposed to look like the news from uh, Burnout Trigger, or I was just like obsessed as a kid with figuring out how this game related to Chrono Trigger and decided that that's what it must have been. Yeah, see, that wasn't even that great. I didn't use MP, so that's good. Yeah, I agree. Another game that uses that well is uh, Bravely Default. So like, does anyone know there's supposed to be this like, uh, Voodoo doll guy. He looks like a, a bundle of straw. I think his name is Mojo. I think you can miss him permanently. Don't you get him in this first town, or do you get him somewhere nearby? You know, it's probably in the other universe. Oh, you know, no, I think I think I remember now. I think it's in the other dimension, but you bring that shark tooth. The guy in the basement gives you. The dude is like worshipping it or something. We'll see. We're gonna get there. Like Bravely Default, the title of this game isn't particularly helpful, but as Chrono Trigger deals with traveling be throughout time, this game is uh, traveling between dimensions. Alternate 
reality is. Ah, I guess I have to jump right on top of him. We'll get it next time. Attack, so that doesn't seem to be the correct way to play. So I bet you it would be the correct way to play if multiple consecutive hits didn't increase the uh, chance of being successful with higher tier attacks. Yeah, like the whole, do you want to heal yourself as much as humanly possible given the stats that you have? Yes? Cool. We'll make that happen for you. So this is how I get that chest. What exactly do I need to do to make it happen? So I need to like push it so it's in just the right spot, maybe? Float up to the surface. a bit faster. Silver loop. Okay. Who would use that? Where's hit percent? Well, you don't have anything equipped. 83% versus 87%. Um, let's, let's stack surge right now. Let's get him looking good. And we can start worrying about buffing our other party members. Alright, so we learned that we want to actually jump on top of the Komodo dragon, I think, rather than like try to sneak up behind it. Timing's weird. No Johns, Dylan. Timing's weird. Basically, you have to press it a little bit sooner than you would think, because it takes him a couple seconds to jump down. you game. Thanks Chrono Cross. There we go. That's what we wanted to happen. It was a don't think just go situation. So let me plug in my uh, headset. Alright. Komodo Pup. Up. Hey John, how's it going, man? This is Chrono Cross, the kind of sequel, uh, spiritual successor to Chrono Trigger. Different team made it. Still has a bitch in the soundtrack by the same composer from Chrono Trigger. <laughs> On the PS1, one of the later games for the PS1. Can I just outrun this guy? 
He doesn't seem super fast. I think I'm gaining on him. Yeah, for sure. I'm just out running. I'm ready. I like that they tell you when they're low on health, it's like you're being bloodied in D&D. What's up, H3NK1? Got him. No, maybe not. Almost got him. That song will never not be awesome. Yep. Done. Let's see if we can get down there to get that chest from that beach bum. That's somewhere around here, yeah. Is it like we can like get through there? Yeah, there we go. That's the ticket. That's not what we wanted to do. We're going to turn back around and go right there. Ah, but how do we get to the beach bomb? Ivory helmet. Alright, so we already have one of those. We can give the other one a potion. There you go. Dog wearing a helmet. sense if you think about it in a way that doesn't make any actual sense so we can't get down there right there's a beach bone down there now he's gone hmm. interesting hey feral how's it going Pasa beach this will be a I think this is like the last place you go in the game. I know, right? Oh, it's so chill. Even the battle music's pretty chill. I love this game's music. I think every time I boot it up, I'm just gonna let the opening cutscene play, the Time Scar. Oh, it's one of the sweetest songs ever. There's a song from this game that's going to feature in a musical uh, puzzle in my D&D game fairly soon. I will not say which one it is. Pretty stoked for that. This beach bum. Let's, let's follow him. What's his deal? Oh, his deal is to just patrol. What's up, Matt? So he's standing there. Can I follow him and see what he does? To give me a hint, perhaps? Because he disappeared last time. Oh, is this like, there we go. That's all it is. Stairs there. Yeah, now that there's a bunch more people in uh, chat, I'll talk about this again. So, this game is based on an unreleased title for a console that was never released in America. Uh, the game was called Radical Dreamers, and it was for this system called the Satellaview, like as in satellite. Uh, it wasn't actually its own console, it was an add-on for the Super Nintendo. Uh, and the Japanese, well, the Super Famicom, the Japanese were really excited about doing add-ons for their systems. Like the NES had a, like a big floppy disk system as well. Uh, anyway, so Teleview was a satellite system. It was also known for a sequel to Zelda Link to the Past that was multiplayer. It was like a Zelda MMO. It uh, was very short-lived. Radical Dreamers was this game that came out after Chrono Trigger. It was supposed to be like a uh, visual novel, the kind of stuff they have on DS. And it was supposed to bridge the gap, kind of uh, fill in some of the 
resolve some of the plot threads that were dangling at the end of Chrono Trigger. But it never actually got released even in Japan. There just ended up being a ROM that was floating around somebody found and translated. And they took a lot of their ideas from Radical Dreamers and uh, repurposed them into this game. A lot of Radical Dreamers had to do with... Uh, well, that's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to do the opposite of that. Come on. Why do they even let me do that? <laughs> Let's go back. Um, a lot of uh, Radical Dreamers was repurposed for this game. Okay. So we don't want to scare that thing off, but we want to scare it so it gets stuck in the cave so we can fight it. Sort of like how um, a lot of this like dinosaur game was repurposed to make Star Fox Adventures, which is not originally a Star Fox game. They just kind of skinned it with Star Fox or Super Mario Brothers 2 USA. Just kin skinned with Mario. Although Radical Dreamers was more explicitly linked to Chrono Trigger, like it was about Magus and Shala. Two really important characters that we're going to meet much later in Chrono Trigger. This game is much more loosely connected to Chrono Trigger. Nominally it takes place in the same universe, but if you played Chrono Trigger. I forgot about this, so there's a boss fight. Here we go. Komodo Mommy. Yeah, Mama Komodo. So I don't remember what her deal is, so let's just take it easy. Her innate is... How much does she hit? Oh, she's not too bad. We're not really worried about this. These are a fireball on her Get it, Poshal. It seems like a good decision, if nothing else, just because it will affect the field in the top left corner, in case she uses any water magic. Whenever you use magic, it changes that field up in the corner. Rudim is just showing up, like, killing her children, taking their scales. We gotta make a necklace for our girlfriend, man. Alright, so see, we just got a star. Whenever you beat a boss, you get a star, and then it kind of increases your uh, ability to use magic. So you, you level up at pre-scripted points in the game. Alright, so we finished that little side quest. We've got enough Komodo scales. We're going to make a necklace for our girlfriend, Lena. Let's check out some of this other stuff that's over here. Cool. More magic. Can I just change that to start? That would be great. Whoops. It's not what we wanted at all. Yeah, no. So I, I got used to pressing start to bring up the menu for Mother 3, and I'm trying to break the habit. Oh. <laughs> Alright, let's, let's fix it. Huh? Yeah? Open menu screen. There we go. Right? Okay, fixed. Lens Flare, J.J. Abrams presents Chrono Cross.
I've heard some people arguing about, like, how you should be careful including things like lens flare in games. The example they cited is, uh, the very beginning of Bioshock opens with you, like, swimming up from the ocean, and then, like, water is beaded on what is clearly, like, the front of a camera, and it drips down, and it's like, that wouldn't really happen if you were a person. It would happen if you were a camera, but when you're a person, water doesn't, like, beat up on your screen and trickle away. What? No, we're getting our old background back. Hey, Jai, how's it going, dude? Uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's get that back. Thanks. I don't remember if the accuracy is so much. Cool, man. Good to have you here. One of those options says accuracy selection automatic or manual. I think it just moves the cursor to like whatever is mathematically correct for you to do. If you want to just like spam the A button to attack. Uh, which if that's the case, that would be great. You can still exert your own manual control. It's sort of like setting the cursor on memory in Final Fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> Sneaker says it's a spying cameraman in the water, so like the beginning of Bioshock. That's not really you, it's like Blackitude floating behind your character, spying on you. <laughs> awesome. I'm gonna have to throw it up on, uh, on YouTube eventually if y'all are okay with it. It's a really cool D&D uh, &D adventure we just did. You can enjoy this nice, relaxing experience of Chrono Cross. Alright, so remember this place for later in the game. Yeah, so you're like, okay, whatever. Surgeon Lena, boyfriend, girlfriend, great. But that'll be, that little stone's gonna be important later. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, it weirds me out too. Got a little bit more used to it. I, I listen to the VODs that I post on YouTube, so makes me a little bit more used to hearing my own voice. It's still weird sounding. Red is theorized to be an evolutionary trait that you're, you evolve so that you hear your voice as being less loud, uh, it reduces the own volume, and then as a result it kind of morphs the way it sounds. So when you hear a recording yourself it sounds bizarre compared to what's going on in your head when you talk. <laughs> Thank you, John. That was the... <laughs> <laughs> the enemy, that was the joke I was going. It's hard to recover, you know, you hear his voice. It's just a barrel. Is it really? That's a pretty suspicious frickin' barrel. Is this chick still being way too deep in the kitchen? God, insanity leads to chaos, then to solitude. Man, I'm just here to get some bacon. I can't even leave because you're being so deep. Deeply moved. Okay. Tell it is poets lounging about in this town. Yippee! What's up, old fisherman dude? cat. See, sure is great. Dude, I just wanted to go fishing. 
Don't tell me about the countless men who have been swallowed by the sea. Man, everyone in this town is just... It's always at 100% with them. They can't just, like, chill. What's up, Lena? That's right. I am a JRPG silent protagonist, so I sleep in late. That's how it goes. I'm actually already on it. I already got your necklace. Nah, we're good. Looks like that tiny Bronco we have there. Okay. Or at least someone in this town isn't super deep. Little do you know, I already did that. I already got four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, pass a beach. Oh, we got some thing, didn't we? We got, like, an element, I want to say. Give more stuff to Pushel. Yeah, we got heal. Restores a small amount of HP. Let's, uh, let's give that to him on his second tier. It's green. Is there a way for us to see in that menu, like, what everybody's main element is? Its status, maybe? Innate is white. Yeah, he's actually called Silent Protagonist. Is yellow, so Hoshal is, I want to say, earth elemental. I think they have earth and wind are opposed. Red and blue is like fire and water, fire and ice are opposed, and then black and white are opposed. Pass a beach. Yep. No problem. No, I actually just got here. Lena here. Hey, Zeo Flare, how's it going? Cool. No problem. It's just like, I don't remember ever speaking in my entire life. Uh, did I like promise to join soldier and become a first class and return to Nibelheim? Man, I've been a lot of protagonists making lots of promises to a lot of people. You gotta help me out here. I mean, let's be honest. We're, we went to the beach and I gave her a necklace. But I'm gonna be the nice guy. whispering at us. I call him Serge, but maybe his name is Sergei. Sergei. 
I'd expect to see an accent on the E if it was. <gasps> Graphics! Reminder, when Surge was a kid, he almost got killed by a panther demon. King Marsh walked in on an FMV. PS1 era RPG players were like heroin addicts going from high to high, from FMV to FMV. Give me that, those next sweet, sweet graphics. Yes, sort of. It's a, I don't know, spiritual successor? You don't need to know anything about Chrono Trigger to play this game because there's nothing that's very direct until maybe the very end of the game, and even then it's tenuous at best. It's very different. Don't you know who I am? I'm Surge. Where are Lena at? Where Poshal at? Something's fishy. <laughs> You know, I think Chrono Cross is a perfectly good game. It would be much more celebrated if it was not called Chrono Cross. It was just a rad dimension hopping game featuring Yasunori Mitsuda as the, uh, the composer. Same thing goes for Final Fantasy XIII. It seems like that game would be perfectly fine if it wasn't called Final Fantasy. Oh man, different world map music. Different enemies. What's going on? Are there more chests? I don't think there are more chests. Oh, there are more chests. Sweet. Different things in them. Do we travel through time? We'll fight some of those fish dudes. They're like angler fish, but they're on land. We have these instead of the beach bum dudes. It look like the news from Chrono Trigger. problem. Big fan of the max healing without using consumables option. The biggest fan. So maybe there are different chests down here. Does there also appear to not be any uh, Dragons, the one that was following that guy around before. When I take it back, there is a Komodo dragon. Does it serve a purpose? I'm not sure. Double necklace. I think this is where we can recruit the Mojo guy. I'd like to see them do a game that more closely bridges Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross. 
Um, like have a game that features both time travel and parallel universe travel. That's right. Got his revenge on me, sneakers. Uh, I understand I didn't... So I, I have Chrono Trigger on DS, but I haven't beaten it on DS. And I believe they added some extra content that's kind of explicitly connecting to Chrono Cross. Like, you fight the Time Devourer. Can I help you, Ben? Talking to them? They can't help you. They're not going to feed you. you got like an hour to go, buddy. Cat lives like a king. Still not satisfied. I'm not sure, I have to read, like, a, I'm sure someone's done a lengthy Game FAQ's uh, discussion on how stat gains work in this game. So there's a character in this name, this game whose name is Glenn. He has nothing to do with the character named Glenn in uh, Chrono Trigger, but damn if I wouldn't accept that as a kid. <laughs> no, they have to be the same. Try to get this mojo dude to join our party. Oh man. Humana, 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 what a hunk! Good, I'm glad that there is an equal level of sexualization of men and women in this game. This is Nikki from the Magical Dream. Remember, it was Mickey in our old. Let's just come out and say it. this is an alternate universe, right? Something's different here. People don't remember us. This is the same house, but it's called Cafe Fleur instead of Kitchen. Alright, so there are radical dreamers in both universes. Are you still deep in this universe? Nope. Just gave up on them ages ago. still get shit from the owner. God, life is pain. It's just a pot. It's just a suspicious looking pot. He went on a journey to brush up on his cooking. Cool. got the Hecran bone before. It's much nicer in this universe. Ooh, chest. I found a chest. I found a chest. I found a chest. Hey, 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 hey. 
My wife does that every time she gets a chest in an RPG. It's hilarious. Like sometimes she'll find three chests and she'll say it three times. Bracelet made from rainbow shell. Dude, rainbow shell is hot shit in Chrono Trigger. Apparently they just make bracelets for it in this game. Rainbow shell is how you make the ultimate weapon. Yeah, I'm a friend of Lena's. I like this song. I like that they kept the like acoustic guitar uh, fret skimming noise. There's totally an alternate universe where Yasunori Mitsuda, the composer, just went on being a low-level sound effects engineer. Yeah, there's Mojo. Sure can. So his uh, counterpart in the main world, call it home, I think it's called Home versus Another World, um, gave us this shark tooth. You were. give up being a fisherman man is because the lead old fisherman dude is constantly talking about all the thousands of people who are dead in the ocean because that would discourage me from being a fisherman i would like worship a straw dude in my basement as well i need to use some kind of item to activate this guy don't i maybe not just the shark tooth some other crap too. Yeah. Felt a beam of light from Lasery the cat. Dude, you're not really doing anything with your life. You're just kind of hanging out in your basement. I want to say you have to find, like, a nail, maybe? But where the hell do you get it? I think you could miss him, too. Look, if you're in chat and you know how they get how to get Mojo in your party, let me know. It totes has something to do with that shark tooth, but I think you need another item as well. You have embarked on a wrong journey. Hecarin is a boss in Chrono Trigger, we're gonna see. We might get to it today. We're pretty far in Chrono Trigger. Mm, boy, I live next door would be me. So we want to have at least one of everything, right? We've got a cure. We've got a fireball and an aqua beam. We can get one more cure and give it to uh, my dude, Poshul. Cool. 
Thanks, Jai. Appreciate it. Am I going to dick around town talking to everybody then? Isn't there like some dudes that are like salt and pepper or something? Poshu? The room looks different. This place is pretty depressing, isn't it? Works like this room's redecorated. Kind of works like a front room. It's so dusty in here. Right, digs and wedge of this game. <laughs> Sure, talking Komodo Dragon. I love this feature of JRPGs, like, every now and then something just doesn't make sense and you just roll with it. Yeah, there's a statue that licks you. Yeah, for some reason... <laughs> this Komodo Dragon can talk. Oh yeah, Magma Bomb. Clip the shit out of that. All right. Let's give Poshul Cure. Yeah have it at the ready. And let's give Magma Bomb. Why don't you take it? Well, why don't we make Magma Bomb the level 2, make Aqua Beam level 1. I'm probably never going to use those tablets. I don't like consumable items. I'll just save them until the end of the game when I have 99 of them and nothing to use them on. This is my house. Dude, I'm like 17. Where are you, Mister? This is Thirty Pooth House, isn't it? Is that true, Mister? This is really, really weird. <laughs> Whatever with all your gibberish, man. Talking pink dog. Get out. They're not going to help you. They're not going to fly over here and, and feed you two hours before dinner time. You're ridiculous. No. I know, Chrono Cross is a good game, isn't it, Ben? Helpful elder to teach me combat. Not in this world. He decided to become a poet. I don't think there's anything back here. Record of fate. Chief sounds like he's a dick. Hmm. Record of Fate tells them what choices to make in this universe. Hell yeah! Bonus tablet that I'm never going to use. Radius was the name of the chief in the main world. Home. Alright. Alright. Came here for extravagant entertainment, but... If that's not what you're here to offer, then I'll move along. Go have my mind fuck when I go talk to Lena. I'm guessing Surge is a little bit slower than the player and hasn't figured out what's going on. Don't be doing any mischief to them boats. <laughs> hey old fisherman dude, are you gonna warn me about like death at sea? Oh, 
Okay, yeah, he's still... That didn't change. Hey, girl. Well, this is where you are. How could you just reef? <laughs> talk about, Poshal. Yeah, man. We, like... We steady. What are you saying, Lena? Try to pony moves on Lena, you jerk. Here's the question is, is this universe only different because Surge isn't here? What happened to him? But I'll tell you anyway. Oh man, the key difference between these universes is that coin flips have opposite outcomes and Surge is dead here. That's me. Check out the grave. Let's go confirm her story. Maybe we'll run into some other crazy shit over there, huh? Really dig this song. There's still beach bums here. Way to go, Surge. Electro Jolt. I think we totally want that. Especially against these water enemies. Lens Flare. Of that electro jolt on Poshal will make her into our uh, black mage for now. We're over leveled apparently. Pierce. I think the max party size in this game is three, I want to say. It's crazy because there's way more than three characters. There's like 40 characters in this game. Remember in Homeworld, this thing said, Surge and Lena forever, 420 blaze it. At age seven, nobody can take anything away from him, nor can anyone give anything to him. What came from the sea has returned to the sea. I came from the sea? I mean, that would be the thing that would weird me out more than being dead in this universe. <gasps> FMV graphics! No, oh, never mind. Well, you just kicked Pushal off the. T what the hell, man? Just kick dogs off of. Cliffs? I 
Okay, so I believe after we fight this guy, Karsh, we get a chance to recruit Lena. But if I remember right, you have to refuse her three times if you want her to actually join you. Hold your seahorses. Is this the graphics part? <gasps> graphics! Yeah, there it is. Australian chick. So it tells us they're innate elements, right? Yellow, green, yellow. And we don't have any... Well, if we had been given the Electroshock to Poshul, we could have used Electroshock on Karsh, but we were silly. This is one of those games that actually gives you a reason to defend, because it helps you to regenerate your stamina. So he like glides over to you when he attacks. Yeah, take that. Fireball plus two. Two out of three of the field is fire now. You defend yourself, Surge. There's our second star. Bone axe, copper, and ivory helmet. I'll take it. down kids invitation during the party at Cape Howell.
Because I think if we have Kid in our party, Lena won't join us. Thanks, Bessel. Aw, oh, man, I got a girlfriend. Aw, oh, man. Nope. Yes, that's creepy. Yuffie. I didn't know you could get pushed all that way, that's cool. Hey, Soil and Smoothie, thanks for uh, following, appreciate it. There you go. It was terrible. They should be kind to animals. I agree, Poshal. Hey, girl. Nice jump. That's me. Totes wouldn't have joined me if I had Kid following me around. Also, I wouldn't have enough room in my party. Thanks, Bessel. Good looking out. You're the MVP here. Poshushu, full speed ahead. I'm probably going to read everything Poshul says because it's hilarious. Even though it's dictated by a uh, an accent algorithm. Not handwritten. <laughs> you again? Were you just sleeping in my house all night? All right, let's go get uh, let's go get Mojo. All this trouble to get Lena, and we're just gonna boot her for Mojo, I think. Does she have anything equipped? Spatula. Good for smacking children's bottoms. Show me your crafting table to make your own weapons and armor is really what she means. Alright, nobody can use daggers, because that is a kid's thing. That is a downgrade, and they already all have that equipped. And I guess we could make one of those if we get a screw, but meh. I'm good, girl. Alright. Let's go get Mojo. Got that shark tooth. Yep. I can see why you'd miss this, because you're like, oh yeah, let me show him the shark tooth. You don't know to come back when you have, after you've done the Cape Howell thing. I guess it makes sense though. Otherwise, you'd have a party of three people when you meet Kid. 
what are they going to do? Have like salt and pepper and Karsh kick Mojo off the cliff as well? Right. Well, you're wrong. No, sir, we're doing both. So we beat Mother 3 on Friday, and we've replaced it with Chrono Cross. So we're going to be doing Chrono Cross and Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger starts in 20 minutes. Also, what's up, Link? We're going to change it up a little bit to... Uh, we're going to do Chrono Cross today and tomorrow, and we're going to do Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core Thursday. Thanks, man. The full VOD is up. Boogum, hold on a second there. What? Love is always in the air, it's just that no one notices. That's me. Oh man. And I bring him good fortune. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked to do Crisis Core. I've only ever played like the first hour of it. Also, you get to play as the character that Cloud spends 80% of Final Fantasy VII thinking he is. Uh, he's way cooler than Cloud. Zack is my dude. Oh yeah, and he can still be Mojo, that's fine. Hey, welcome back, Isla Extraordinar. Uh, you know, we like Kashal. What's his elements? Black? Well, we can have white, black, and yellow. Yeah, Chrono Trigger starts in 20 minutes. I'm okay with playing Chrono Cross at the same time as Chrono Trigger because they're so tangentially related. You're not going to get any Chrono Trigger spoilers from this game until very close to the end, and by then we'll have already beaten Chrono Trigger for sure. Because this game's quite a bit longer. Any main Final Fantasies have sequels? Uh, 7, 10, and 13. That's it. No, 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 I'm sorry. 4 has a sequel now. I haven't played it yet. Final Fantasy IV The After Years. Uh, that's on a list for a blind playthrough to do on here eventually. <laughs> I love the way Mojo runs. <laughs> Can I put him at the front of my party? Please? Maybe? Perhaps? No, maybe not. Oh, 12 Revenant Wings. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so there's 12 Revenant Wings, 13 to Lightning Returns, um, 10 to, fortunately, there's 7 Crisis Core, 7 Dirge of Cerberus. I guess you could call uh, Advent Children kind of like a sequel, even though it's a movie. 11 had multiple expansions because it was an MMO. One through ten's your only canon, though. Yeah, man, we're gonna do Final Fantasy IV: The After Years. The sprites for it are really cool. I've ripped them off for some future events in our D&D game. It's like I think it's about Cecil's son. I want to say. I've had some people in chat talk about uh, that game and say it's pretty cool, so I'm looking forward to it. I don't think we want to go in there yet. Let's, let's save since we've been doing that too frequently. Hi, Ben. So, <laughs> in these games, I've tried to avoid doing things that are long and grindy that would take forever. Uh, but I don't know if I could forgive myself if I didn't get the Golden Chocobo in Final Fantasy VII when we get to that, so... We'll go ahead and do that.
Okay, try not to. I'm glad that they didn't institute random battles in this game, that would have been disappointing. I call Dingo! Dingo on that map. I don't know how happy Mojo is. Oh! <laughs> You're right! I guess that's not off of a main title. Because if you go that route, there is some like I guess you could say tactics is offshoot, and tactics advance. Crystal Chronicles. Now, Crystal Chronicles would be a really cool game to do on stream. Unfortunately, I think I would need to physically have people here. So like, <laughs> Patrick, maybe when you and Mandy move out here, we'll do Crystal Chronicles on stream and uh, Zelda Four Swords. Crystal Chronicles is a pretty sweet game. Nice. The DS Crystal Chronicles is pretty good too. Again, I really want to do DS games, but $400 is a lot for a uh, capture kit. What delightful battle music. Well, it's looking like the voting on my subreddit that I have there on my profile, that 6 is the number one right now for a classic game, so we'll probably do 6 the first time we do a Final Fantasy. Uh, but maybe we'll put Final Fantasy IV The After Years as the next obscure title. Yeah, I never beat Crystal Chronicles 2. I got really far with it. It was such a pain in the ass to set up, right? Because you had to have four Game Boy Advances that all had battery. You had to have the four cables, which I have all of those things. I just don't have people. I play a two-player with my wife, but just like one person carrying the bucket around. Yeah, Crystal Chronicles is a very satisfying game to play. It's lots of fun. It's got a cool, like, Celtic soundtrack by this uh, lady composer. Ouch. If you want to hear a rad song from Crystal Chronicles, look up uh, Sad Monster. Holy crap. Okay, I've got to be more careful. We're sitting here just having a good time. Mojo gets basically one shot. Mystic Quest is on the list. I remember renting that after I'd already played four and six for the Super Nintendo. Just being like, what is this? Uh, Link, is Kirby, uh, is it just local co-op or is it, is it online as well? I assume it's just local, right? Mystic Quest has a pretty cool soundtrack. It's like, dumb American's first RPG is the way it's, baby's first Final Fantasy. Hey Ryan, how's it going, man? Local only? I guess I could play it with Andrea, my wife. Hey Wiltronic, how's it going? So like, the question is, is Mojo dead? Or does he have like one hit point now? He has one hit point, good. That's what we want to see. Uh, but we can't use Cure outside of battle, so we'll get into a battle so we can heal him. Go harass this bird as well, I guess. What's up, dude? That's us!
Yeah, Link, what, but like I've been saying before, it would be really cool if they enabled online co-op, but it's so hard. Like, you think that in the best case scenario, you probably have like 20 milliseconds of lag between the two of you, so... Netplay code isn't, uh... Unfortunately, we haven't found a way yet to make it so that it's very easy to, to program and implement. You have to design the whole game around it. Stop the hell out of that noise. There's a monster, but I think we're ready for it. Let's uh, let's go ahead and use some of our tablets. We have 15 of them. Oh, it's like my cat's being a bastard. There we go. If we die, we die. We just recently saved. Hey, welcome back, Soil and Smoothie. Thank you for following earlier. My uh, follower alert is busted. I didn't notice it until after you left. Good to have you. Usually it goes focus scope from uh, Earthbound. Alright, 10 minute warning. 10 minutes we're switching to Chrono Trigger. Uh, right now in Chrono Trigger, we are. Oh, we just got to 2300 AD. Dash and slash, nice. So we haven't yet found out about the big threat in Chrono Trigger. Heck, huh? Use it on Surge. That's, oh, that's not gonna be good. Mojo's black elemental. Damn. One shot. Ouch. Now how much is that gonna hurt one of them? Oh, it's acceptable. Could be way worse. Go ahead and cure, partial. Damn, man. Dog. A kid with like a swallow sword. Sweet bandana. Some kind of straw voodoo man. You gotta chill out, man. Breathe. You know, maybe it's correct to defend when he goes to do that. That's not what I meant to do. I promise. <laughs> um, Alright, well. <laughs> let's go ahead and use a tablet on Poshul. So it was highlighting his character, and I should have been paying attention to the arrow, not to the highlight. So he could kill Poshul here. Oh, he's gonna hit Surge. Perfect. Surge is also white, so that should do slightly reduced damage. Emphasis on this slightly, apparently. More 
accidentally healing the enemy who can one-shot our characters. Maybe Mojo is not the best guy to have with us if we're gonna run into all these white enemies. Can we get his special move? That would be nice. Nope, we're just gonna kill him. That works too. Arrow saucer. Ooh. What's that? I guess we don't want Poshal using. Well, no, it's okay. Throws blades of razor sharp arrow to slice foe. Okay, that's cool. Fireball. Get the level one fireball. Let's give you uplift. Cuts out and drops a block of stone on foe. So it really just means earth magic, is what they're telling me here. We'll give that to Poshal since he's or she's yellow elemental. Yeah, but Mario Kart is built on the assumption that there's online play. Like, you think about what what do you need to have work in Mario Kart, right? Versus what do you need to have work with two people playing a cooperative game? Mario Kart, there's some room for error. For example, like a, a red shell that's homing in on you is going to home in on you, whether there's 10 seconds of delay or 20 seconds of delay. And there's some... Because there's so much going on in that game, there's room for it to not be perfect, you know? But when you're playing a, a single-player or two-player cooperative game, there's less room for that. It's not, I'm not saying it's impossible, you could totally make a Kirby game that has online uh, multiplayer that's co-op, but it would add a whole lot of money, a whole lot of cost to its development. You figure, like, the kind of people who are good at making uh, platformer games usually aren't the same kind of people who are good at making online multiplayer games. You have to pay more people. It's difficult. But I don't say that to say I don't want it. Please, give it to me. That would be great. Just that I understand why we don't have it. Yeah, yeah, I might need to get rid of Mojo. We'll see. I don't really have an easy way to switch characters at the moment. We're going to go rest in what's not our house. Then we're going to throw up the BRB sign. I'm going to feed the cats, run to the restroom, and start up Chrono Trigger. Isn't this like the dude outside's house, though? They'd have to get some real value out of online play, I guess is another way to put it. Like, they have to ask, how many people are going to play Smash Brothers online? How many people are going to play uh, Mario Kart online? The number is very large. A lot of people want to compete with each other. How many people are realistically going to use the online co-op in a in a casual game like Kirby? Probably fewer. They'd have to see that like people would buy Kirby because it had online co-op and would not buy it if it didn't have online co-op. You know what I mean? All right. Let me uh get Chrono Trigger started up here. Let's... Fix that too. One sec. I closed the uh, game and it's still running. There we go. Okie doke. Uh, we're also going to cut the stream for a second to fix the game, so it'll come back here in a few seconds.